Okay, so let's let's play the game and yeah, let's play Life is Strange. Yeah. So this is the very beginning of the game. I think this is one of the very difficult seconds of the beginning of the production because as you yeah, this is the first time the player will see what the game looks like and will be inside the story. Uh, so we got a lot of discussion about this one and a lot of discussion about the shots, uh, how we are going to present uh, Max character. Uh, the important, as this is a video game, is the player to know where he has to go and the objective of, the, of, the, of each scene. This scene is a link to the end of the game, of course, and it's also to, to close the loop and uh, begin with this scene. And when you know the end of the game, was something we really wanted to have, so we can see all the FX and we've got one FX artist, very talented, Thomas. Uh, here you can see a lot yeah, of his work, uh, the all the particles, the tornado. We, we took a lot of time to work on this yeah. tornado because when you're working on an episodic game, it's it's important to still hook the player from episode one. So that's, that's, that's the kind of discussion we had, we had about the reason to when should we put something that has a bit more impact and that feels something that shows the player that there is something bigger. Uh, so this introduction was was a bit like that. We wanted in, in Life is Strange the player to always know what Max is knowing and to, to just be with her. At this moment, Max doesn't know where she is and the player doesn't know it either. Oh. We're back to, to the high school, and which is one of the most important settings of the game, of course, the high school setting and the Blackwell Academy. High school is something where the player will feel comfortable because he knows it, but the transition from the cliff to there is the twist of being, having something really different and that should hook the player to say, oh, it's not just a teen story, it's, there is more to it. And then, of course, we can go much more, much over than that and twist it and change the characters. But it was an interesting starting point uh, creatively. This kind of uh, introduction is really important because in one uh, sequence with some shots you have to discover all the different characters, the main ones, so you will see of course Jefferson, Kate and Victoria. And it was quite hard to decide between not showing too much, to not break the idea of the game, to not be too big before, uh, compared to what the game would be would be would be after there is a lot of themes of big big ideas on, on on the game and of course photography is one one of it because photography is still a way to to look back to the past it's linked to the theme of rewind and time manipulation and nostalgia and that's one of the reasons why max came back to arcadia bay to attend this photography class i think for the player to be like max uh, back in this town when she, she don't know everyone, but you, you've got to respect the schedule. It's really, as a player, something great uh, to, to discover. Also, the, the lighting was really important in this scene to, to break the, the cliff uh, ambience by this uh, sunny atmosphere and all this light coming from the windows. And maybe we, we decided to, to, to have a, pr a private high school rather than just a regular high school for, of course, for the photography course. But it was also to be able to have less students because we wanted the story to be a bit more intimate. We didn't want it to be like a, this huge high school with so many students but based on what the player is doing. You can really learn more about them and see that they're actually not just the stereotype and the, the archetype. You, you would think they are. This is still a perfect example of how episodic is hard, <laughs> because if yeah. you look closely at this poster, there is a mistake on it. It says that the, the exhibition takes place in the De Jong Museum of Art, yeah, when change. actually it's not, la it's not that in episode five, it's the Zeitgeist Gallery. We have a really great community. Uh, <laughs> yeah. so thank, you, thank you, guys. Uh, and people found out this mistake, and yes, it is a mistake. It's uh, when in episode five, we found out that we couldn't, it couldn't be a museum. It was too, too big, so it has to be mm. an art gallery, so we changed the name, and yes, there is a mistake like this in episode I was about to. Welcome to the real world. We really wanted to to have this feeling of being part of a world high school. So it means a lot of people. It means bullying. It means uh, difficulties when you're a teenager in this kind of world. Uh, and showing the different cliques and different kind of of, of of teenager. I think a lot of players love this introduction. The use of music here is really important. Is as Max feels insecure in this atmosphere. Uh, we wanted her to isolate, and the music is a, a great way of isolate yourself when you just want to be on your own and. So since the beginning of the game, we were working with uh, listen tracks, listen music. We, we test 
when we are testing on prototypes and scenes, we put some licensed tracks from artists we love, and Sin Matters was one of them. And when we ask uh, Jonathan Morali, who is the lead uh, of Sin Matters, if it's possible to use his music, uh, he's, he's a gamer, so it was really happy to have this new experience, and for us, it, yeah, it's just incredible to work with him. And this quite of uh, editing is really, really difficult to do because you have to to choose the important uh, moment in a song and to choose the, the right images. Because our writer, Jean-Luc, uh, has written many, many scenes built around music. The, the edit is, based, is uh, based on the music. It's not uh, the other way. The music is really important in the game. It, it explains a lot about the characters uh, because the choice of the music, the choice of the artist means a lot. For example, Chloe won't listen to the same artist as Max. For the anecdote, for this uh, guitar part, we asked the lead uh, singer of uh, Sin Matters to, to take his guitar and to play on top of uh, Gonzalez's song in a clumsy way to be sure that it would be like Max playing guitar.